Thanks for staying with us. Now, days after the union budget was presented uh, by Pranab Mukherjee, industry stakeholders inter interacted uh, with the student community and took them through the finer nuances of what the finance minister has proposed for the fiscal 2011-2012. Sri Prapanj reports on the interaction organized by the Business Line Club today. What's in it for me? That's the question everyone has been asking for the last couple of days after Pranam Mukherjee presented the budget. And answering some of those questions were business head Gopal Srinivasan and chartered accountant R. Anand. Too much of demarcation between when women, senior citizens is, is confusing the whole agenda of tax lab itself. If whatever concessions are available are applicable equally to men and women. Women have got a much larger concession as far as land is concerned. In this budget, there is nothing special for them. Gopal Srinivasan virtually built a bridge between the experts and the student community when he commented upon the liberal allocation for urbanization, 12,000 crores sanctioned this year. Mr. Gopal uh, Srinivasan has uh, especially mentioned that why it is that this budget which leads to urbanizations more. And he also mentioned the points which, which is useful that which makes India to be a better uh, developed country. The experts who said that the disinvestment target of 40,000 crore rupees is achievable dealt with a few disappointments as well, but told the students to look at the positive side. In Chennai with Sri Prapanj, Evelyn Matthew for NDTV Hindu. Now, despite the 100 crore rupee allocation in the union budget for microfinance institutions, all is not well for the MFIs. Especially after being roughed up in Andhra Pradesh, they have becoming uh, literally untouchables of the financial services sector. Fighting for credibility and transparency, then Microfinance Institutions Network, a self-regulatory organization, has come out with yet another strategy to change perceptions. But will it work? Well, questions still linger. Pushed to the sidelines of the financial sector and with the Maligaon committee putting its foot down, MFIs now seem to have their backs against the wall. And the response of the banks? Well, they have gone into overdrive to reduce exposure. There is this event, uh, almost cataclysmic event in a certain state. It does impact the MFIs considerably. Fresh funding, new money flowing into the MFIs, has been negligible. That is the reality. And that's why I said there's a cash flow issue to that extent. There is a liquidity issue. I'm not saying there isn't. Indeed, some major PSU banks even confessed off the camera that certain erroneous MFIs were on their radar and also that the banks were far from achieving their lending targets to MFIs. Now, this in turn has raised questions about the sustainability of MFIs. See, the banks, uh, they have been uh, lending at a certain level in the past. Now that level of lending has substantially gone down. Uh, MFI used to be growing at, let's say, some 50% or 70%. Now the growth has come down to maybe 5%, 10%. But playing the eternal optimist, the industry does seem to be confident of its future, especially since the budget announcements. The finance minister's uh, statement that MFIs have played a very important role in financial inclusion, I think is a very good, very positive, very strong signal. I'm merely saying I'm optimistic in the framework of the fact that overall the Reserve Bank of India, the government of India are adopting a very positive policy stance towards the sector. But with question marks over industry regulations, challenges posed by lack of a policy framework and severe liquidity crunch, things are indeed looking ominous. Will the industry buckle or will it iron out the problems and rejuvenate itself? It all depends on the will of the MFIs. In China, this is Ashmit Kumar for NDTV Hindu. Time now for what is set to lift our spirits this season. This is our World Cup special on the cup that lifts the nation. Well, in today's match at uh, the Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bangalore, chasing the daunting target of 328 runs, Ireland got a good partnership for the first wicket. The pair of Joyce and Sterling shared a partnership of 62 runs in the first 10 overs. Especially Sterling was looking aggressive when he scored 32 runs off 28 balls, but fell in the 10th over. And following that, Ireland lost the momentum and the next four wickets fell uh, by adding just 49 runs, but for the sixth wicket, O'Brien and Cusack 
have added 180 uh, runs till now and have kept England waiting. The current score now stands at 233 for 5 at uh, 36.4 overs. Now, in a big setback to India's chances in the tough Davis Cup World Group clash against defending champion Serbia, veteran duo of Leander Pace and Mahesh Bhupati have withdrawn from the tie due uh, to injuries. Leander is down with a wrist injury while Bhupati has suffered a groin injury. They have been replaced by Karan Rastogi and Yuki Bamri in the squad. Meanwhile, India's singles hope uh, Somdev Devarman, double specialist Rohan Bupana and Rastogi have already reached Serbia while Yuki Bamri has uh, left for Novi Sad today. We now move on to an unusual story of a man who helped youngsters from poor families in Bihar to study at the prestigious institutions like the IITs. Anand Kumar, the man behind the noble effort, has been attracting a lot of praise and has also been honoured here in the city of Chennai. Anand Kumar belongs to a backward family in Bihar. In 2002, he felt the need to open the gates of prestigious institutions like the IITs to extremely poor families who cannot afford the expensive courses. And Super 30 was born. 30 students train in a batch, they also get food and shelter for free. And Anand does not accept donations to fund his effort. I want to prove that if you have keen desire and iron determination, then you can do anything without any help. It is a model. This is a model. It is a model that can be seen on this model. That some poor man can be made a model and can be able to help the children of the need of the need. Super 30 has been greeted with phenomenal success. In the past eight years, 212 out of 240 students made it to the IITs and in the last three years, every single trainee qualified for a course in the IIT. Anand Kumar's effort earned him many accolades. The Rotary Club of Madras also honoured him for his untiring service. The success of Anand Kumar was not easy. He was even attacked and injured by those who opposed his work. But nothing could stop him and Anand now has a dream to achieve. Our goal कि हम लोग मिलजुल कर एक स्कूल खोले ऐसा स्कूल जिसमें क्लास सिक्स से फ्रॉम क्लास सिक्स टू ट्वेल्व बच्चों को पिक करें उन्हें पढ़ाएं और अच्छा करें। The success of Super Thirty shows that knowledge knows no barriers. In Chennai with Krishnamurthy, Jason Dosh for NDTV Hindu. On that inspiring note, it's time to say goodbye. Thanks so much for being with us.